Quasi. This is Quasi. You can see that beautiful yellow crest here as well. So that's a soft crested cockatoo. They're also very successful here in Australia. They're going very well. Very popular and intelligent species. And these days we find them through parks, gardens, golf courses, and sometimes even in our busy city streets as well. Now it's great, of course, the sunbirds are doing well out there. We all like success stories. But as our show goes on today, you'll meet some species that are finding it pretty hard. You actually need a bit of a helping hand from us. So we've already seen some amazing adaptations, and the next birds in our show are no exception. We're about to meet a parrot that is adapted to using colour. I'll need that in a minute. It's adapted to using colour to surviving in the wild, but how might colour help an animal survive in the wild? To help explain, we're going to meet an eclectus parrot, and the eclectus parrot we're going to meet is a male, his name's Les. You might know that in the bird world, it's usually the females that are dark and dull and grey, but these males are usually the ones that are brighter, but with eclectus parrots, how's that? Close enough? <laughs> well done, buddy. With the collectors parrots, the males are just as bright as the females, or I should say the females are just as bright as the males, but they are actually a completely different colour because they live in different parts of the forests up in tropical far north Queensland. Now males like Les, you can see he's a beautiful green colour on top. If he was to fly up into the tops of those trees, he would blend in or camouflage where he's trying to hide away from things like birds of prey that might be coming down to try and eat him. Now you guys have already seen here, but it's underneath his wings, oh that was a big one, you want to show properly? There we go. Under Underneath these wings, he's got some really cool colours to blend in with the fruits and the flowers at the tops of those trees as well. Do you want to show them again? That's a better one. Now, I did mention that the females are a completely different colour, and that's because they have a different job. These males, their job is to collect the food from the tops of those trees. Females, they'll sit in tree hollows, in nesting hollows, for up to eight months of the year, so they need to be a darker colour. They need to be dark enough to blend into their surroundings, but bright enough so that males like Les can actually see them. So they're a dark red and blue colour with a black beak. They are very different looking birds. Well done, buddy. So with these guys, it's not the biggest, brightest male that gets the female, it's actually the one who brings the yummiest food. So during the breeding season, males like Les will be visiting his girlfriend, bringing the biggest, yummiest food he can find, and then doing the same thing for three or four other girls as well. And you don't have to feel too sorry for the females though, they're doing the same thing, getting visited by three or four different males every single day, each trying their luck with the best, yummiest food they can find. So I think you'll agree that colour is a pretty amazing adaptation. And we have just learned that Australia is the land of the parrots. They are one of our success stories. They've adapted to a wide range of environments and they've adapted to eating a wide variety of foods. And we all do love a success story, but some of the birds out there in the, in the wild aren't doing so well. And some of them need a bit of a helping hand from people like you guys. So this is one of them now that needs a bit of help in the wild. We're about to meet a pink cockatoo or Major Mitchell's cockatoo. One of the world's most beautiful species of parrots. Also joining us is a red-tailed black cockatoo. These guys, as well as looking really nice, they've actually got something else in common. And that's that in the wild, they rely on large territories. In those territories, they need tree hollows for nesting and shelter. Have a look when our Major Mitchell's flies. When he lands, that crest will go up again. And you'll see why he's one of the most beautiful birds in the world. Isn't that nice? So you can see they are pretty big birds. Tree hollows big enough for birds of this size can actually take up to 200 years to form. And we're losing those trees to deforestation. We're actually turning those trees into a very simple product. It's actually a product that we need to be using every single day, but it's not a product that we need to be losing our trees to make. Before we find out what that product is though, we are going to meet a different type of bird that does also rely on those tree hollows. But the next bird in our show is a little bit different. We're about to meet a nocturnal or a nighttime bird of prey. You probably started to guess what that is. Here's one of our beautiful owls. Yeah, we're very, very lucky in Australia to have eight species of owls. Half of them are what's called the master owl family. And that's things like the barn owls. If you're walking around the sanctuary today, you'll see some barn owls in the neighbourhood. They've got a really distinctive heart shaped face. This bird, though, is in the other family of owls. It's called the hawk owl family. So they do have very hawk like features. This one is called a barking owl. And today, we're going to meet our female barking owl. This is Millie. Now, some people do wonder about owls during the day. Are they able to see where they're going? I think we've probably proven already. Let's watch Millie on the next one and see if she can spot where she's going. I think we'll find very quickly she's easy to Now you might think we've got all those adaptations that these birds would be going really well out there. In northern Australia there are lots of beautiful bark owls. Unfortunately here in Victoria the bird we're looking at is actually an endangered species. We only have about 50 or 60 pairs 
of these beautiful birds still from in Victoria, so really not going to do at all. Doing one pair of owls around, they can do a great job in keeping the rodent understanding in an area. And while barn owls are a real success story out there, the barn owls like Lily who are facing some very big challenges out there in the wild, they do actually need a little bit of protection of their own. Now I think you'll agree, Lily's a bit of a star, she's done a great job. I'm going to give her a round of applause as well.